Yo, it's Alex Terranova, and welcome to Flip the Lens, where Brie Holland, London Papa Michael, and myself smash down the walls of perfection, performance, and looking good to dive face first into deeply vulnerable and personal conversations where we expose and explore what it means to be authentic and how to succeed in a world desperate for a facade. What's up and welcome back to Flip the Lens. This is Alex Terranova. I am joined by my awesome co-hosts, London Papa Michael and Bree Holland. How are you guys? Good morning. Man, this is an exciting show. This is a, um, the first time we've actually brought somebody on as a guest that wasn't subbing for us. Somebody that we're actually just going to talk to and, and learn from and get their opinions on. And somebody that actually means a lot to you, London. So I want to I want to touch on that for a second. I want to introduce him and tell a little story. Um, so our guest today is somebody who I, probably about five or six years ago, I was living in New York City. He was very popular in New York City. Um, and I followed him online and I started to see him come up in the like, I want to say motivational speaking space and uh, having an impact on how people should live their lives. And I was like, man, I don't know about this guy. Like, I was like, I feel like he's just like capitalizing on his fame and his success and I just I don't know like is he properly trained does he know what he's talking about where he's coming from and I just like would casually watch and then he would show up on with people like Lewis Howes and and other people that I had respect for and that I would see and I'd be like man I just and as a coach that's done like so much training and so much like work I would just always question when I see people on the media um, or on media giving advice and talking to people about how to live their lives and whatnot I'm like because are they just like are they just spouting stuff or are they actually like, what's their motivation and where do they come from? Mm. And about, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago, I was in San Diego and I heard this gentleman was speaking in downtown San Diego and I was like, all right, I gotta go. Cause if, if I don't actually investigate for myself, then I'm ignorant and I'm judging him without knowing. And I showed up to a talk in San Diego, which is where I met London and I heard him speak and I was totally taken back. I got to like totally check my own righteousness and my own judgment and see that this was a man who was coming from love, who was coming from compassion, who was coming from wanting to change people's lives and help people and was doing it like the, I want to say the right way. I don't know if there is a right way, but was really doing it from this heart and, and he didn't need to do it. And he was making a difference from so many people and it totally flipped it for me. And it has me now show up different and look at people different all the time because of that lesson. And I'm glad I was able to do that. And I'm, it's pretty exciting that I get to sit with him today and actually talk to him um, because it wasn't predictable, especially five or six years ago when I saw him for the first time. Uh, And we'll talk about, and I met London from that conversation too. And me and London have obviously become close and and become good friends. So London, thanks for uh, making all, all of this happen. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to see how, you know, things come about and you can't connect the dots till you look backwards. But, you know, for me, Steve, is it, when I first think of Steve right now, is, it's a sense of pride because it was a goal I set out to achieve and I, I didn't stop for a year until I finally got a chance. And when I got that chance, I didn't know what it would be. It was a Uber ride, the, my, my most expensive Uber ride I've ever had, <laughs> you know, to a place I've never been, not knowing anything except for, hey, man, I'd like to meet you and let's work out. And then to fast forward it to just think of it as just a true friend of somebody I can depend on. And if I needed something from Steve, whatever it is, he would do it. If I, I guarantee if I asked Steve for money, he would help me. If I was about to be homeless, he would let me live with him, you know, and that's way more important than the fact that he paid me a lot of money to make programs for him, you know, to be able to um, have someone I can truly depend on, whether it's a, something as a job opportunity or something is more important to me is, Hey man, my sister's struggling. Would you send me a 15 second message? Hey, I'm about to meet a guy that used to weigh 500 pounds. He just lost half of it. Would you text him a message and say, Hey dude, I think you're awesome. Anytime I've ever asked Steve something like that, he's done that. And I know this guy, he's a friend of mine. So that's, that's what he is to me. Yeah. Since since we, since you dropped the name Steve, and there's a lot of Steves out there, so people are probably thinking about their friends. Man, I know a great Steve. Let's introduce who this oh, Steve no. is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Forever grateful. Forever our, grateful. Our, our guest today, uh, London's great friend, um, 
the, the man I was speaking about before, Steve Weatherford. Steve is a Super Bowl champion. He's a motivational speaker. He's an entrepreneur. He's a super devoted husband and father. These are probably the two things that impress me most about him is his commitment to his kids and his family. If you follow him online, if you see what he talks about, I mean, they are just woven into everything that he does. He's a uh, podcast host. He is a philanthropist. Uh, so let me just give you a quick little insight into what he does. He was a record-breaking uh, NFL kicker, and he made it his mission to connect, inspire, and coach other people to live abundant, healthy, and uh, well lives. And he does this through fitness, which now as a retired NFL player, he founded Veritas Labs. He has Weather for Fit, and basically he believes that if, and I, and I love this, I think all of us on this podcast also believe this, like if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't go take care of other people. If we're a mess, like how are we supposed to support the world and make the world and other people a better place? Um, Steve, you got five kids, man. You live in San Diego. I don't know how you do it all. We're about to find out, but welcome to the show. Yeah, man. Th thank you guys so much for having me, Alex. Uh, Bree, I look forward to getting to know you. And uh, London, dude, I love you, man. Thank you for all the honor you guys have given me. Um, and I just hope that I can be of my highest use to, to you guys and to your audience because I feel like we just spent about six minutes talking about uh, how good of a dude I am, which is awesome. And I, and I truly do appreciate that. And I hope the listeners know where this, you know, this wisdom or experience or advice or the adversity that I share with you guys is coming from, from a very humble person that uh, I believe one of the reasons London and I have become as close as what we've become is because I see so much of myself in him. Um, and as you guys have seen, like every time he said he asked something of me, I always said yes, but if you'll notice, everything he asked of me was for someone else. Um, and so he's just a guy, uh, he's the type of spirit that you want inside of your tribe. Um, he's not a taker, he's a giver. Uh, and for that, um, people are attracted to him that want to fill his cup. Um, so anyway, London, I hope my time here today fills your cup, fills the listener's cup. And um, with that being said, man, thank you for having me. We're really excited. I know for me, um, as a mother, I don't know much about, you know, your, your background <laughs> with all of the, the ins and outs of the gym and weights and fitness and all of that. But I think with being a mom of three little girls and pregnant with my fourth, it struck me that I'm an entrepreneur as well. I have a business. I run that at home with my fiance of 10 years. And I think a huge part for me is seeing a man of faith and seeing a man with five children, but also pouring into his community and business with so much passion. For me, when we were talking, like, wh how, where do we want this conversation to go? I was like, how do you do it? Like, I know for listeners, a lot of people go, oh, I'd love to build a business or I'd love to do that but <laughs> how the heck do I balance it? How do I make sure that my priorities are in check? How do I make sure I'm showing love to my significant other, my children, that I'm raising them? I mean, five children is no easy task <laughs> if that was your only job. So how do you handle it? How, do you, how did you take on so much and go, or how do you balance it? I think you're muted. Uh, I think yeah, the, okay. Steve, you're muted. <laughs> There you go. I muted, I muted myself because a plane was going over my head <laughs> when we were asking that question. So great, que great question, Bree. Um, and for me, when somebody asked me that question, because it's a question that people you would think would ask a lot just because you have five kids, right? And that's something that people can actually see that I'm doing um, and I'm involved in them. But whether it's, you know, the businesses that we have or the people that we love or taking care of ourselves or our kids, um, I have like planted my flag on being the most intentional man that I know, whether or not that's the case, because there was a period of time, Bree, where I hung my hat, like it was a hashtag that I always posted, London will remember this. And sometimes every once in a while, I'll bring it back out, but it's not what I hang my hat on. And what I was, I was going to say is the hardest worker in the room. I used to think that that was the reason that I would succeed because I would just be the hardest worker in the room. And I did that. I was the hardest worker in the room and I, I wanted a lot of levels, but my identity was being the hardest worker in the room. And so when you wake up every single day and you, and you have a day where like you're fatigued and like you, your central nervous system has just been going 9,000 RPMs for months and months and months. And you feel like you need a day off because your identity and what you hang your hat on 
is being the hardest worker in the room. Like, unless you get a jillion things done in a day, your identity is I, I wasn't enough to good enough today. I wasn't this, I wasn't that because you're essentially putting your self worth and how much your value is based upon how many things you do. So actually you have no value, your skills and your workload volume have all the value. And so I lived my life like that for a really long time. And, and about two years ago, I got really, really serious about what my identity really was because I was hyper developed physically, you know, muscle magazines and pro sports and all this stuff, hyper developed mentally to be able to just like, if I'm having any type of emotions at all, mentally, I was so tough and so conditioned. Didn't matter what was going on. People died, something happened, kids are sick, psh, put it in a box, put it down here. Became really good mentally and physically developed, but emotionally and um, spiritually, I gave no time to my development. And so to your point, two years ago, I decided to become the most intentional person I know, not the most hardest working person that I know, the most intentional person that I know, because in the Bible, it says God didn't, doesn't, didn't create us to, to grind. It doesn't say grind in the Bible. It doesn't say hustle in the Bible. It doesn't say toil in the Bible. When it does say toil, it says God doesn't want you to do that. So God, for me, I decided like, what's really, really important in my life. And then I'm going to be incredibly intentional for that. And so the fruit that you all are seeing, like Alex sees on Instagram story with my son and, you know, London's been around my family uh, several times, the fruit that he gets to experience and the confidence in my, and my little girls and my son are the seeds that I planted, you know, months or years ago. And I've just been really, really consistent. And if you're consistent with the way that you plant seeds for what you want to harvest in your life, you're consistent with nurturing that you can get two years of maturation in a relationship in two months by being intentional and strategic. That was the second part that I want to kind of like put on that for you, Bree, is like, yes, being the most intentional man in the room, but intentionality is not enough. Like I had the hard work part down and the intention part kind of like a little bit, but now I decided to plant my flag on intention and couple that with strategy. And so now if I say like, I have a fighter jet of achievement, the twin engines are intention and strategy. And those take me everywhere I want to go and help me achieve everything I want to achieve. When I say achieve, not just money and trophies, I'm talking about achieve the marriage that I want, achieve the relationships that I want, achieve a relationship with, with London that I want, where, where he doesn't feel like all he does is give to me um, because he does give a lot of support and a lot of encouragement. He reposts dang near every morning motivation that I put up on Instagram story. And I see it every single time. Um, so my point to that is being intentional and strategic to be able to support and nurture the relationships that, that nurture you. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, for sure. I love that answer. I, uh, man, that it's, every time I hear you talk, I'm like more, I'm like, I believe more in, in what you say and who you are. And I just have more respect for you. Um, what I hear in that is integrity. Like my life changed because six years or five years, whatever it was ago, I was like, shit, I have no integrity. I say, I think about things, I don't do them. I say, I'm gonna do things, I don't do them. I, and I, my life changed because I was like, you know what? I need to, the thought, my thoughts, my words, and my actions need to be in alignment. And everything mm -hmm. changed from that moment that I committed mm -hmm. to that. And I hear that same thing about the intentional and strategize in there. That's a really mm -hmm. cool um, distinction. I want to, um, I want to understand more about how you've dealt with like fame and being humble and still like being down to earth and to connect with your family. You know, you're a guy who for a minute was like, everything was based on the way you looked, right? The muscle magazines, you could have been out there running around on at nightclubs with tons of women and, and not being the man that you're committed to being. Mm. And I know people that go to church with you in San Diego that speak, that have told me about you and your relationship with them and the churches down here. And I'm really, that's just not how it goes for everybody, right? People get, you, and you were in the NFL, so you already had all this, but you've been with your wife for a long time. How have mm. you managed to not let your ego go bananas, you know, while you were in the NFL and even now, and actually been committed to, to these things, this, this, you know, intentional and strategy without going crazy? So what, I, what I'm hearing you ask me, Alex, is with all of the – the things and all of the decisions that could have been made that would have been decisions based upon feeling. Example, you, you get invited to a club to go do an autograph signing and you know it's gonna be nothing but women there. Do you make the decision to go there and get that money 
or do you just decide to not put yourself in uh, an environment like that so things like what you don't want to happen don't happen? Mm -hmm. And I, I wish I had like a really groundbreaking <laughs> uh, answer for you, but it's going to be the same answer that I gave Bree. I'm intentional and I'm strategic. And so I don't put myself in the places where I feel like my body is going to override my commitments. And so, dude, I'm a man just like everybody else. Matter of fact, man, I probably have like a larger appetite for intimacy than a normal man, but I'm communicative you do have with five my kids. wife. I you do. do have, hey, you listen, five kids. And, I, and here's the deal I got five kids and I'm not Mormon, bro, but I do crush a lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to laugh at my own joke. Um, but my, my point to that is, is, you know how like people create like a vision board for like what they want their life to be in five years, what they want to drive, what they, um, what they, the house that they want to live in, you know, maybe there's a, a like a pan bag that you've just been dreaming about since you were a little girl, or maybe they're, um, you know, being on a muscle magazine is a goal for you. So you see these people's vision boards, but I want to challenge the people that are listening to this right now and you guys as well is what does the vision board for the superhero version of you look like? And, and I feel like the best way that you can come up with that is I just think of my childhood heroes, you know, like people like Bruce Lee. And the, one of the reasons I loved Bruce Lee, because I actually think he's like kind of like a skinny twerp because he's like 145 pounds. But the thing I loved about Bruce Lee is he had the most ridiculous level of discipline of like any dude walking the planet minus like Jesus Christ. Right. And so in my mind, when I think about what my discipline, what I envision myself to be, my vision board for me, not for like my cars and all that stuff, but my vision board for me, because I believe if we focus on the vision board for us, all of the cars, all the clothes, all the clout, all the things that you want to do that would be on like a normal vision board, you're going to be able to do all those things two times, three times, five times over. And the reason I can say that with full confidence is not to stand on a, on a soapbox and say like, um, follow me because I did it, dude. I just, I just want you guys to know that the way that I'm doing my life isn't proprietary to me. It doesn't work for just somebody just like me. This is replicatable excellence. And it has so much to do with your mindset, with your intentionality, with your strategy. Um, so uh, I guess I'll land the plane there and, and, and get another question. But um, yeah, man, so much of my life just comes down to an in intentionality and strategy. And I guess I'll just tie the boat on tie the bow on this vision board for your life and, and some of the other people maybe i'll just share some more examples um confidence like hulk hogan when i think about like before i get on stage like i don't know if i've i know london knows this but i used to vomit before every single pro football game that i ever played in the the national anthem would sing would would go and i'd be standing next to my teammates on the sideline right flags on the field and then i used to pay a manager on our team an equipment manager I used to give him $2,000 at the end of every year as a Christmas bonus because every home game, he would be holding a 55-gallon drum after the national anthem and holding a gate, an orange Gatorade. And as soon as it was over, I would turn around, I would vomit it, and he would give me orange Gatorade because that would chase away the puke taste. So when, when I talk about the vision for myself, is like Hulk Hogan was like the most confident person that I knew. And so I'm constantly summoning those superhero characters in my mind when I'm making decisions every single day. And so at the end of the day, I'm not ranking myself on how much closer did I get to buying a Rolls Royce or whatever it is that's on your like vision board. It's how much closer am I getting to the superhero version of myself by just the decisions that I'm making, you know, like getting up in the morning and not hitting snooze is like, you're taking your next step towards being, you know, the Bruce Lee of discipline of your life. And if you make decisions based upon, and this is the last thing I want to say, and then we'll get another question is, but if you make decisions based upon your commitments before too long, Alex, you know, like when you were talking about where you just had no confidence, you just start stacking promises that you make to yourself. And before you know it, you're not pretending to be as disciplined as Bruce Lee. You're looking in the, in the mirror and realizing that you're the benchmark for discipline. You're never going to be perfect, but be reminded Bruce Lee wasn't perfect, man. It's not about being perfect. It's about shooting for perfect and catching excellence. You, you had lots of opportunity to speak, whether it's you being a guest or you doing your own podcast and you have the Mighty 300, which I would love for you to touch on and your experience with that and how it's evolved versus your first kind of idea of it and what it's become. And, you know, what's something on your soul, imprinted in your soul, Steve, that you've never 
necessarily had the chance to talk about or been asked about, and it's just weighing heavily on you. Whether it's just something funny to cheer everybody up versus what's going on in the world or something that has to do with the Bible verse, but what is on your mind that you would like to tell people, Steve, that people don't ask you about or necessarily bring up? Um, people ask a lot of football questions. People ask a lot of like fitness and mindset questions and routine and time management questions. Uh, but one question people don't really ask that much is like, what advice would I give myself when I was a kid? I know that's kind of like generic, but I'm actually really surprised because there's, there is some advice that I would give like my younger self, because I remember struggling so much with like worthiness and identity, you know? And I remember when I was 15 years old, you would, you would think that the people close to you would support the dreams that are like most precious to you. But I remember when I was 15 years old and I shared my goal of being a pro athlete with my, my dad. And I remember we were in a, a, a Ford Ranger truck, 1986 single cab, red stick shift. And I remember when I was 15 years old, I usually didn't share things like this with my dad. I had a good dad, but he wasn't like the lovey dubby. I'm still proud of you, dad. He was tough Midwest dad. And I just remember him picking me up from practice because I was 15, couldn't drive home yet. And I remember telling him, I just blurted it out, said, Dad, one day I'm going to go pro. And I remember, like, waiting for his reaction. And I remember him just taking a deep breath and then just shifting that and, and not even stopping long enough to, like, look over at me, acknowledge what I said, and even reply back to me. He just kind of, like, scoffed, just kind of like, huh, and then just kept sh kept shifting and him and I never spoke of that goal again and so I guess my advice to my 18 year old self and my advice to people listening to this right now London would be dude play for an audience of one like there are so many of us and I've been one of them too I'm not casting stones dude so much of my life was predicated on goals to get the adoration or the acceptance of other people and a lot of my like football goals too like if you look at look back and you say you can't really understand yourself until you look backward to connect the dots man I look back on my life and a lot of the things that I achieved like a lot of the philanthropic stuff that I did in, in New York Alex that you may have like seen on the news and stuff like that like looking back on it yes it filled my cup because I loved helping people but on the deepest most foundational level for my intention behind doing that is I was trying to get the attention of my dad because I'd already won a Super Bowl I'd already done the muscle and fitness thing and I thought you know maybe maybe those don't impress my dad maybe me being like you know just so generous and so Christian that that would get my dad's attention and I became the most philanthropic person in the National Football League I got an award it's called the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award and that was 100% to get my dad's attention and I didn't get my dad's attention but I ended up getting the attention of people like London and people like that started to come into my life and so my my point to the people listening to this is like play for the audience of one do things because you want to do them achieve things because you want to achieve them drive a car because you like it not to impress somebody else. It's like the Brad Pitt quote. Don't work so hard to buy things you don't need to impress people that you don't like. Play for the audience of one. That's what I would give my younger self the advice to. And honestly, I bet you my life would have turned out pretty similar to how it did right now. But a lot of the achievements that I would have had in my life would have been achievements that I wanted, not achievements for other people to enjoy. But because of those achievements, my life has turned out and the ecosystems that I get to run in, I get to speak this word and speak my truth. And I believe I get to shift men's lives and women's lives by the conversations that I have. I love that. I wanted to quick ask, how do you implement what you learned? You mentioned your father and how his response was and how you're now intentional. How do you check yourself that you're implementing that into your children's life? We obviously aren't perfect. And every single child of mine has very different personalities. They need different things. How do you check yourself and make sure that you're filling those buckets with intentionality? Is there a specific, okay, oh, yeah. this child needs yeah. this, this child, am I, Steve, am I, am I checked in with? I'm, I'm looking at my phone right now because I've got some very tactical, very clear advice for what you're, you're hearing, what I'm hearing you say. So what the question yeah. I'm hearing you say, Bree, is with all of, with your husband, with your three daughters they're all built individually like mentally physically emotionally different their needs are different the amount of time that they need is different um everything is different so with everything that you have going on how am i able to be intentional with each individual kid consistently to nurture their growth so i can get you know like we talked about two months of maturation in a relationship um in in two weeks or something like that you know like how do you massively accelerate the nurturing process and my um my advice from experience to you is this is what me and my wife do um, 
every seven days, and we'll actually be doing it here in about three hours. On Friday, we take about four hours. And I call this, this is my intentional cheat sheet for dating. And this is how we run three businesses together. And this is also how we've been married for almost 14 years. I've been with her since I was a teenager. Uh, we have grown through so many like seasons together. And it's very, very difficult. And this is this cheat sheet is not something that I've used for many, many years. But looking back on my life, connecting the dots, what's really worked for us and what hasn't worked for us. So every seven days, I take this on my date with me. And I also take a notepad on my date. Yeah, I know it sounds nerdy for the guys listening at home. But dude, you want to be a leader in your home? Power move. Bring a notebook to date night. Your wife will know that you're really serious about leading your family. Like Alex is laughing a little bit. And my wife laughed when I had that first. And it's she laughed. Time. And then she thought to herself later on, man, this son of a bitch is serious about leading our family. I'm going to take this serious. You know what I mean? Um, and so the intentionality of bringing that notebook and then going through what I'm about to share with you guys has allowed us to build, to start scale businesses and to start and scale a family. Uh, the first one was, is, and we've done this in different fashions, but we, this is what works for us now is we spend one hour in family strategy and planning. And you don't have to spend one hour. I spend about 10 minutes on each kid. I've got five of them. It takes about an hour. And so what we do, and that allows my wife and I to get really clear and come back together every seven days to see how each individual kid is developing and how we can do it better. Because like you said, there's no balance for parenting kids. There's actually not balance for employees either. Some employees are just type A, self-starters, get it done. And some of them need, to, need you to hold their hand, but they may have brilliance inside of them. And that's how kids are as well. You know, it's not like one kid's better than the other because, you know, one kid needed you to wipe their butt until they were six. I've got kids like that, man. But you know what? I believe that they have, you know, incredible gifts inside them. And like the fact that they couldn't wipe their butt until they could you know, in like first grade is not the determinant factor of whether they're going to be successful. But my point is we come together once a week to see how each kid is developing emotionally, spiritually, physically, and see how we can step up and kind of flex ourselves and our intentionality for that kid. And also talk about an intentionality and strategy. If I know that like my little girl is really struggling, like my daughter's 10, this is not happening right now, but I'm, my antenna is up for if my daughter starts to really struggle with her confidence. I know that's something that she can get from her daddy. I will make sure it, it, when my wife brings that to my attention, cause I'm not aware to everything, man. I've got, you know, I'm, I'm doing things during the week. Not that I'm not intentional there, but I use her to help me see what's going on in my kingdom. Cause that's my home. I'm the king. I create the order. I create the roles and responsibilities. I create the expectations, right? Not like I'm a boss or anything, but that's my queen. So she's keeping eye of all of that. Uh, so that was the first thing. The second thing is we spend one hour in marriage strategy and planning. How can I be better for you? And how can you be better for me? At first, we started doing that at the beginning of date night, the, the marriage stuff. And that didn't work out so well because I showed up with my note, notepad with like 16 things like, okay, you can do this better. This did it, did it. And so we ended up putting that second because if we put it second, we come together on something that we love our kids and how we can be better for them. So that's the second part. The third part is we spend one hour in reactive strategy planning, fixing this biz, current business problems, you know, putting fires out. Um, and we're not actually putting the fires out in that hour. We're just communicating what the fires are if that makes sense. So this meeting isn't about getting things done. This, this meeting is about knowing exactly what's going on in everybody's life. And so when I get home and I step into a room, I know exactly where that kid's emotion is. I know it's where it's been for the last six days. So if I've been traveling and speaking, I slide right back into the fold and I know exactly what's going on in their life. I know whether or not they got an A or a B on their last test. And that's special to them. Because for relationships, for kids, for employees, for uh, mom, for dad, for your wife, they want to feel four things. They want to feel loved. They want to feel supported. They want to feel seen and heard. And if I get together with my wife every seven days, she's going to feel those four things. And, my, and my, my kids will feel those four things because of the time that I invested intentionally with my wife in strategy for everybody else. Uh, and then the last thing is we spend one hour reviewing and adjusting the upcoming seven days of sales, promotions, and offers. And then the last two hours, we drink tequila and giggle like we did when we were in high school. And that, to me, if you guys don't remember anything from this show, if you're a business owner, if you're in relationships, 
that right there is what allows me to be an intentional and strategic with not just my wife and my kids, but with all of my relationships. Because when we get together um, tonight, I'll also tell her, I'll be like, hey, you know what, uh, I've been in quarantine for like four weeks. I think it'd be really good if I got like a guy's afternoon next Friday. So can we flex this to that day? And so she knows what my needs are. And sometimes she can't fulfill my needs. Men need other men, not in a weird way. We need that. We were built to live in tribe. We weren't built to sit in front of computers and, and trying to figure out how to get people to swipe up on Instagram to buy supplements. That's not how we were built, man. My body was built and your bodies were built to climb over mountains and kill animals and climb back over the mountains and feed our family. We don't have refrigerators. So guess what we're doing the next day? We're going to do it all over again. And so if I had that need, I communicate to that my wife and I'm actually doing it this Saturday. I got 12 of my homies together. London, if you want to drive down, uh, we're going to climb. We're going to go on a, like a three and a half hour hike, uh, potato chip, 8 a.m. this Saturday. So I just communicated that to my wife like, man, I need some gorilla time. And so that's what we're going to go do, man. I invited a whole bunch of buddies and we're just going to go be together. We're not going to drink beer. We're not going to go get high. We're going to talk. And we're going to go climb a mountain with weight vests on. I need that. I hope that answered your question. I'm not <laughs> offended that you didn't invite me. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have the required parts, Bree. <laughs> um, man, <laughs> I'm, I laughed like throughout all this stuff you're saying, brilliant and it's simple. And I just love the, um, it's like the honesty and the levity that you bring to it. Like you bring this serious intentional demeanor, but there's also a, a level of levity that like, hey, we're human beings and we're not perfect and, and like we're doing our best here. Um, I've been in a, a, a couples counseling with my girlfriend recently and there's so much gold that is in what you just said that I'm like, man, we need to implement this. And I think this is where, when I said like my respect for you shifted, it's when you hear things like this, it's like you really see to the core of who you are uh, and I just really appreciate that. And I just, I think it's really important that people see that not just with you, but with all of us, like where are people coming from? Yeah. The one question I have for you really quick is like, who do you look up to that? I know Jesus and the Bible is, is like a main thing for you, but I want to know like a, the living man on this earth or woman, who's that person that you look up to that you get your kind of mentorship from right now? Yeah, it's really, it's a really, really tough question because I'm really, really picky, you know, like you could say people like, T.D. Jakes, you know, because I think I feel like he's so brilliant. He's so deep, but he's like kind of like you said, and thank you for the honor. You know, he's funny, but man, like the things he's saying, like they're real, like it's deep, you know, I really like him. But there's a there's I can find problems with all of those guys because they're not one 360 yeah. degrees of like T.D. Shake T.D. Jakes is not disciplined like he doesn't have self-control. And I'm not hating him. I think he's amazing, but he. He's overweight and he doesn't take care of himself. And so there's one man that I've met in my whole entire life that every category of his life, there's fruit. And when I say fruit, we kind of talked about it earlier, you know, like deep, meaningful, long-term relationships with friends. I want that. I want, I want mentorship from a man that has a marriage that is just unbelievably encouraging and open and loving and honest. I want to follow a man who is a king and a priest, like a man that can pray for people, but an, also a man that can go in the weight room and just freaking take territory and also just be gentle and loving with his family and with other men. I want to be with a man that financially can bless other people because he, he has set himself up. He has continued to take territory and and maintain order and install roles and responsibilities and expectations so he can afford to be generous with people. And his name is Keith Kraft. He's a He's an entrepreneur slash pastor. Um, he was an entrepreneur until he was 40, and then he decided to, to start a church. He's 60 years old right now, and he still bench presses more than I do. And I'm, hand to God, I'm dead serious. Um, so he's just got fruit in all of the areas of my life. So if you guys are listening to this, um, it's at Keith Craft on Instagram. And he's, he's wrote, written some really good books on leadership, uh, Leadershipology 101. He's also written another really good book called The Divine Fingerprint, which talks about um, really quickly just how all of us have essentially 99% of our DNA is the same. There's only 1% genome study was done. There's only 1% of our DNA that's different. And I believe that's the like the weirdness about us that we all try to suppress and hide from each other. But then when we step into like owning who we are and there are differences, that's because, you know, I'm starting to own like 
how emotional and just like deep I am. I didn't do that when I was in football. I suppressed that down. But now that I'm owning it, people like Alex are honoring me with like, man, dude, that's really deep and funny. And I, I've enjoyed it. This is applicable. And so when I receive feedback, like from that, that just encourages me to do more of what I'm doing right now. And I believe that's why tribe is so important. That I believe friendship is so important because we can say what we want to say and you can be as mentally tough as you want to be, man, but we need each other. We need encouragement, man. We need honor from each other because I mean, we could have done this whole interview and I never would have known what Alex really enjoyed about the content that I create or what he enjoyed about who I am. And so it would have been him robbing me of a gift of acknowledgement of knowing what it is people enjoy that I produce. And so just creating relationships where it's just open, it's like, you know what, dude, I really appreciate people that, that give honor because those are the type of people that I want in my inner circle. So with that being said, I hope that answered your question. I've really enjoyed the time here today. Hey, Steve, to close us out, brother, touch on your experience with the Mighty 300. And uh, here's your opportunity to honor somebody else and your experience um, with that. Yeah, my, Mighty 300 was something that Man Academy is what my son and I have done about a year and a half ago. I invited my son into my world of personal development. And that starts in the morning. And that's mental, physical and spiritual. And so we created just kind of like a blueprint, the same way I would create like a program, you know, the way that you helped me create programs for our clients that wanted to accomplish goals. I created that not just for the physical, not just for the mental, because I was good at those two things, but also for the physical and to approach that, that game plan with the same level of commitment and consistency that I did with my training mentally and physically conditioning myself for the NFL. I'm approaching this man Academy with my son in the same way. And it's producing the same level of evolution and maturation in my spiritual and emotional growth, because there was trauma that we all go through as kids, but I compartmentalized all that, put that down because I mentally and physically needed to perform a skill. And then you get to where you're like 33 years old, you retire from pro sports and you start to feel some things because you're not in that same industry of needing to compartmentalize it. And so there were things that I need to experience and go through and sit therapy that I needed to get. And um, it's taken me to where I am right now to where I understand myself more and I can help other men and women to understand themselves more because of the work that I did. So um, I just think it's very, very powerful that you can help accelerate other people that are maybe going through or went through the same thing that you went through. But instead of them having to go through seven years of wilderness and feeling alone, that it can just be a podcast or a phone call or a text message. And they're like, wow, I had no idea you went through something like that. How did you come out of the other side? Boom. Healing starts beginning. Healing starts beginning. Then transformation begins. And then that person goes and blesses another person. I mean, I, I feel like that's just kind of like at the end of the day, when you're laying on bed, dude, you, you want 16 Super Bowl trophies with you? Or do you want to have like 6,000 people there because you absolutely shifted every single one of their lives. And one of those people maybe shifted somebody else. So you can rest assured when you go to sleep, there's a hundred thousand people that were positively impacted because God gave you breath. That's what I want. Amen, dude. Uh, this has been awesome. It's been all what you always deliver, man. And uh, I just want you to know, I appreciate it. Um, it's been, it's been awesome to reconnect with you, brother. I love you, man. I'm proud of you, dude. It's really cool to see, um, the adversity that you've gone through at London personally, uh, and, and the mindset. And I know there's been a lot of dark days and a lot of days that you, you don't feel like you're a role model to people. Um, but it's not the achievements that, that inspire people, man. It's the come up for real. It's Amen, the come dude. up that inspires people, man. And so your come up story is still happening, but dude, I'm just very happy to see these other people on this screens, uh, supporting you, supporting your gifts and holding you high so you can be heard by other people. Love you, man. Hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, Bree, Alex, um, flip the lens. Thank you everybody that's supporting us. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff on the way, man. Thank you. Thank you for listening. It's not easy to create these episodes, but we know it's important. We need more real open and honest conversations. Because we know that whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, you're not alone. A life pretending isn't worth living. So please share this podcast with a friend. And thanks for listening.